60 million years ago, at the start of the tertiary era, the world climate was uniformly warm with abundant rain. In those conditions, everything was occupied by rainforests and the most highly evolved plants called anthophytes or seed-bearing plants obtained energy from the sun in the presence of plentiful water. The anthophytes developed an extremely ingenious system of reproduction. They invented flowers of appealing colors, full of sweet nectar to attract the small animals whose bodies would then transport the pollen from one plant to another. The system was an evolutionary success, but some 60 million years later, the climate began to change. The continents moved, and in many places around the world, temperatures dropped. There was less rainfall and the forest shrank, leaving large open spaces. This was the opportunity for another humbler and more backward line of plants, the graminiae, commonly known as pasture or grass. The simple grasses did not have large flowers or heart-shaped leaves, but neither were they dependent on the pollinating animals in order to reproduce. They launched their pollen into the wind and with it colonized the entire planet. Like David against Goliath, the unremarkable grasses won out against the proud, ostentatious anthophytes. In addition, land covered in grass can feed 90% more herbivorous animals than the same surface area occupied by forest. Not only are they not harmed by being eaten, it in fact makes them grow even more. Their reserves are well guarded beneath the ground and will repeatedly grow again, even from the part above the surface is devoured a hundred times. In this way, the savannas, prairies and steppes occupied enormous spaces on all the continents feeding legions of herbivorous animals. Various lineages of mammals eagerly took up the challenge to make the most of the abundant grass. For a mammal, vegetable matter is difficult to digest, and the majority of what is consumed simply goes to waste. This means they are forced to eat large quantities throughout the day. But one of the branches, that of the bovines, deer and antelopes, managed to house in their stomach certain bacteria that help them to ferment the grass and so make more efficient use of this food. They are what are known as the ruminants. In the parallel world of Australia, the marsupial version of the grass eater is the kangaroo. Kangaroos demonstrate that evolution seeks similar solutions to the same problems. They are an example of adaptive convergence. They have bacteria in their stomachs and chew the cud like the ruminants, but are at the opposite end of the genealogical tree from the mammals. Their system of moving by jumping saves energy in short stretches, but it is not suitable for the long migrations the ruminants of the rest of the world have to undertake. That is why all others use four legs, all except one, man. Herbivores need to be constantly on the move in order to eat, and at least twice a year they migrate, longer or shorter distances in search of places with more grass. Moreover, the grasses of tropical regions are less nutritious than those of the northern hemisphere. Therefore, all the herbivores of the world, ruminants or not, have in common certain physical characteristics which enable them to travel great distances using the minimum energy in order to find fresh pasture wherever it is. This, therefore, is the origin of all these swift animals of the savanna, not the pressure of predators as was at first thought. This grass revolution was also vital in the development of human beings.